Um, so I'm joined with uh, Steve Sparks, who's going to be delivering the Demand Share Workshop, which is going to be looking at uh, harnessing muscle synergies to sustain robust athletic performance. So, hi, Steve. Hi, Lincoln. How are you going, mate? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Yeah, all, all good, mate. So we're going to talk a little bit about the sort of what the day is going to cover and what is this sort of how you see this demand share approach um, workshop sort of uh, helping clinicians. So in terms of what the day uh, is going to, to actually be looking at, what do you describe that as? Um, I mean, I think for me, it's it's very much a sort of movement first approach in terms of what you're looking at with the with the person or the, the athlete in front of you. Um, uh, and sort of looking at the the movement choices and, and the options or the the lack thereof that they may or may not have, which are interlinked with their their symptoms or their their injury, uh, the things that they're presenting with, and then allowing you to to go on and interpret the synergies involved that sort of uh, either create or control those movements. Um, I guess to, just to allow a more robust and efficient pattern of movement um, with more choices because you have more synergistic interplay of, of muscles interacting as it were. And for clinicians that are considering the day, uh, what do you think it would bring to them that maybe they're not doing or what would add to their game? Uh, I think a lot of clinicians are, are very good at um, sort of a, assessing the person in, in front of them in terms of the traditional approach that, that we all have uh, um, from a physiotherapy perspective or, or even from a, I guess from a, a sports science or strength and conditioning background in terms of looking at, at fundamental or functional movement but I think this adds a, a significant layer of, of detail of what's happening in, in terms of the, the component parts of those those movements um, and allows you to build a much more detailed picture of why somebody is moving like that or is unable to move in a, in a certain way and have a better understanding of the, as I say, the muscle synergies that are involved within those movements and where then you can really focus and target your intervention um, from an exercise prescription point of view and then start layering on top the other expertise that you would have in, in terms of capacity and, and strength and robustness of those muscles, um, but in a, in a much more um i guess more robust multi-purpose way of thinking okay so um expanding the, the clinician's toolbox but also reasoning process by linking the movement we're seeing to the associated muscle synergy and then trying to consider is that associated synergy uh related to the presentation yeah, absolutely. And, and I think that that's important. It's still having that clinical reasoning as to whether what you see in front of you is relevant to that patient or not. I mean, absolutely everybody would always say we all move differently and, you know, we absolutely do. But I think it's the point of is, are, is what you're seeing in front of you relevant to that person and the complaint, the complaint that they're coming with. And then using that reasoning process, as I say, it allows you then to better program um, their, their intervention from an exercise point of view. I think that idea of everyone moves differently is, um, huh. there's a number of aspects to that. One that strikes me is when people say that everyone moves differently. I think when um, some of the problems are when people start moving the same, as in consistently using the same strategies to move. So the individual consistently moves the same as themselves again and again the same way. And I think that could be maybe a razor of risk. I, I don't know if you've got any sort of thoughts on that. Yeah, you know, I think um, I think one of the reasons why it's easy to say we all move differently is because there are so many different options of being able to move. So it's right that not everybody is going to have exactly the same sequence of movement to perform a task, which is why we all move differently. But I, I agree. I think it's when you're when you start to lose some of those choices and you you always have the same pattern of movement to perform that task ultimately you're going to stress the tissues involved in the same way all the time you know so whether that's that's joint or, or ligament or tendon or, or muscle you're you're almost not giving respite to those tissues and those structures by being able to vary your movement and, and particularly with a in a sporting context the environment is forever changing 
and therefore the way that you move also may have to change depending on the the situation you know so whether you're playing football or rugby you're going to have to avoid a tackle or you know the, the ground surface may be uneven or if you're out running the terrain may be slightly different so you have to be prepared to be able to move in very different ways. And if you don't have those choices, I think that's when uh, tissues can become injured because you're constantly stressing them. Mm. The um, the variability conversation is, again, another fascinating one and infinitely complex. Um, one sort of term I've thought about with this is that variability. So variability and sort of just adapting that word slightly that you can vary, you have the ability to vary. Is, is one aspect of this that, again, rather than get stuck in a, a certain strategy to always move in the same way. And I think relating it back to sort of the demand share idea is, is if you're always moving in the same way, maybe we're sort of loading those same tissues in the same way. So spreading the risk, um, the demand share is about spreading the work across different tissues and trying to interpret movement to do that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I would agree with that. Uh, and, you know, it, it may well be, you know, from, from my perspective, if you see somebody that's always been moving in the same way and they're stressing those tissues, conversely, it may be that they don't actually have enough tissue integrity or, or capacity or strength in some of their other tissues. And then when they have to use a different pattern of movement to achieve a task, that might be one of the reasons why there, there's a, an injury mechanism um because those tissues don't have the ability to cope with something that they've been asked to do um so, so i agree i think um it's important to have that that variability and, and as you rightly say you can change it to you vary the ability um and i think it, it's important to have as robust a, and an efficient muscle synergies in play to allow those movements so you can pick and choose what it is that you want to do at any moment in time Okay, so the the idea of the day then, the, the Manchester workshop, we're going to be looking at this, uh, harnessing these muscle synergies to sustain robust athletic performance. That's the name of the day. Um, ideally, delivering in, in September, at the end of September, and delivering in London, in Battersea, and also going to be sort of hopefully delivering some uh, online content to support that coming soon. So that's the, the plan. So I'm going to say uh, thanks to Steve for now for joining us. No, th thanks, Lincoln. It's been my pleasure. And uh, catch you next time. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.